Welcome or welcome back. Sean with Bacon and Games here. Today, I want to talk about doing more with less. As indie developers, we're often strapped for time, for resources, and anytime we have an opportunity to get a little extra out of something that we've spent time on, it's a win. Today, I want to talk about a color replacement shader that keeps me in Godot longer and making fewer round trips to tools like Asprite or Adobe Animate or whatever you're making your art in. So with that in mind, let's get started. So now we're in Godot and we've got this sample button here, which is using a green screen color that we're going to replace to make multiple instances of this button. I'll open this up real quick. You can see it's, you know, it's got an animated sprite. Each frame uses that green screen effect. Um, you can see I've got the easy squash and stretch node in there from my previous video that'll make this nice and juicy when we click it. I will link that down below if you haven't seen that one, right? So we've got this kind of juicy button click. Um, but we don't want that green color. So I will expand this materials drop down and we'll create a new shader material. And then we're going to go quick load under shader, which is going to bring up all the shaders in our project. We just have this one. So we're going to open it. That's our color replacement. And you'll see it turns black because that's our default color. It's replacing that green with black, but we don't want black. We want, let's say classic red. So if I expand the shader parameters section and click on this color chip, now I can make it red. And if I want multiple copies of this, let's just move this up a little and duplicate our button. Now you might think, let's do the same thing, right? Expand material, click on shader material and change our color. But you'll see they're both changing, which is not what we want. They're using the same resource. If we want two buttons of two different colors, we need to click on this shader material drop down and make it unique. And now when I change the color, I get one blue, and one red. Now, because we've put this shader on essentially the root node of the button, it's going to replace everything inside of it that has that green with that color. So if we were to go in here and let's just say duplicate this button and just slide it over for a second and go back here, you'll see we have two red. And if I change this, they both change because they're both children of the button scene. If instead you've got two siblings that you want to change the color on, you're not gonna be able to put that shader on the, the parent node. So let's, let's just delete this second button and let's remove our shader material. And we'll go back into the button. And now what we're gonna do is add that shader to these individual sprites instead of the button parent. So I'll speed through this real quick because we've already gone over how to do this. So now we've got the shader applied to each of these individual sprites instead of the parent, but you'll notice last time when we did that, it turned black. We're gonna to have to uncheck use parent material, which was required in the previous example because we were letting the parent node dictate what shader would be used to render this. So if I uncheck this, you'll see now it goes black and now I can make this one red and we'll select the other one, uncheck that, and now we can make this one blue easy enough. But from here, I don't have access to that shader material anymore because they're no longer applied to the parent. There's a couple of ways to fix that. We're going to go over one right now, and this is to right click on here and select editable children. And now I can click on those individually and go into my materials just like we did before. But you'll notice if I click on it, it doesn't actually let me change that. That's because there's one setting we have to change to allow us to make this edit from here. So let's go back into the button and expand resource and select local to scene for both of these. With that change made, if we come back out here, once we've expanded our editable children, now we'll actually be able to go in and change the color. The other way to handle this is to write a custom resource and pair it with a tool script that allows you to bubble up that shader parameter to the root node. Uh, I actually did something like this for a Game Jam game that I did a couple of months back. If you're interested in a deep dive on that, let me know in the comments and I will do a video specifically on that tool script and the custom resource. Okay, now I think we can move to our second use case of how we're gonna get more out of less. So we've got this sample warning light again using our green screen color for replacement there. 
and underneath it I've got an animation player. So if we go back through and apply this shader again, it's going to allow us, let's make this kind of magenta color. Now you may notice because we have an animation player node in here, we've, we've got this create keyframe icon, which means we can animate it just like any other property. So if we select our animation player and let's create a new animation, we'll just call it flash. And I don't know, let's make it five seconds long. And what we're gonna do is go back to our sprite and we're gonna click keyframe. You can just click create and we're gonna to move to the end of our five seconds. We're gonna create another keyframe and then right about here at two and a half seconds, we will change our color. Let's just change it to like, say a darker version of that magenta and put another keyframe. Now, if I play the animation, you'll see that it does flash. Flashes very slowly because we picked five seconds, but the point is we can also now animate colors because of that replacement shader and we can animate whatever colors we want independent of what we put in the sprite. Now, if you're new to Godot or game development and this is feeling like a lot, don't worry, that's exactly why I'm here. For everything I can't cover on this channel, there's Skillshare the largest online learning community for creatives. Skillshare's classes are made by industry experts who have actual real-world experience. As a matter of fact, I actually took Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class while trying to figure out how to run this very channel. And I cannot express how valuable it was to see the process of a creator I already knew and trusted. Their classes are designed by creatives for creatives, and they've got thousands of them, ranging from storytelling to game development, marketing, illustration, and more. Which is great for us as game developers, because making games draws on every one of those disciplines, and a lot more. On Skillshare, you'll learn by doing, alongside a community who can give you feedback, if you want, and you'll learn at your own pace, on your own schedule. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial to Skillshare, so get started today. The last thing I want to show you is how to access that shader parameter and manipulate it via code. If we test this, you'll see when I click on these arrows here, which are also using my squash and stretch, you'll see it's cycling through a list of a couple of colors. So if we take a look at the underlying code, most of what you're seeing here is just to make this demonstration work. And it's not really about how we're reusing this replacement shader. The magic, is literally this one line of code right here. We've got one sprite 2D per body part and each one has the color replacement shader on it. And if we open the shader real quick, you'll see replacement color is the uniform that we're using to control that parameter. Uniform is like an export variable for shaders. And we're accessing the material property of the sprite 2D and then we're calling set shader parameter, passing in the value we wanna change it to as the parameter. In this example, we're just using it to cycle through these exported color variables, but the sky is legitimately the limit once you know how to access those shader parameters. As I mentioned earlier, this is available on itch for free to download. It's linked below. It'll be the second entry in my bacon juice package, which also includes the easy squash and stretch node from the last video, and will include a bunch more things that are coming out of the game I'm working on. Now, what do we do? That is all for today. As always, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in the next video.